Good morning. Today is July 22nd, 2022. It's super hot already and I uh, want to make this short and sweet. So we'll see if, if I can do that. Got the tool off the zinnias. These are the shorter variety, the lilliput and some early bird. Same here, lilliput and early bird and um, managed to save them from the bunnies and the slugs. So that was a long process of getting those planted and sown and re-sowed and replanted and over and over and over again. And finally, they're doing okay. This is a really great example too of pinching out your zinnias. If you're not pinching out your zinnias, you're missing out because when you do, they spread out like real bushy like. Um, and that was probably the bunnies doing to be fair. But see how this one's spreading out so much, so well? So the bunny probably nibbled the top of that off and did the work for me. So we have the verbena, banariensis. It looks really beautiful right now. Um, it's really oppressive. I've had to water every day. And um, yeah, let's just see how we're doing here. So we have the two rows of the sunflowers, the dwarf varieties, and um, they're doing okay. This variety is doing a bit better, I think. So, and then we have the zinnias over here, the larger varieties. This is the macarania. I'm really excited. I was very surprised to see that. Um, I did just this week plant more zinnia seeds in here because they pop up really fast in this type of heat and I really really wanted the two varieties that I have here. This is the again more of the macarania in the front and then in the middle row it's going to be the whirly gig and a vari variety called dream. It's a purple variety that I've not grown before and then in the back it's a few different varieties of sunflowers. Um, I lost one there. I put some cucumber seeds in yesterday though so we'll see how they do um the cucumbers have been really challenging for me the last few years a lot of mosaic virus and just I have two we'll get to over there and I lost one with the intense weather earlier on in the year and I did put some seeds in over there and some more starters I have a watermelon one little watermelon so far that I know of. There may be others, but I haven't, I've been trying to not mess with the vines too much. So that's my little watermelon. And then some volunteer, super healthy looking ground cherry plants. Oh, that's actually, what's that? Hmm, that doesn't look super healthy, but should be fine. So I did have the container garden um, the container ground cherries right here last year, but it's been so hard to keep everything watered that I moved all the containers to the house next to the hose instead. So I do have this burlap up today because these newly planted, oh, how brutal is that? Oh, isn't that the saddest sight? So those are the Samarina Rudbeckias and this is the Mardi Gras. Uh, Hellenium, and unfortunately, they get most of the heat throughout the day, or most of the direct sunlight, and they've just been struggling the past few days. They should be fine eventually, but with it being in around 100 today and tomorrow, I decided to put a little burlap um, cloth shade in front which doesn't look like it's helping out but it will as the sun rotates her yeah makes its way across the across the garden um instead of being in full sun all day it'll get this morning sun and then it should calm down and this is exciting this is the oh look at that okay well this is very exciting news so this is the purple twizzle penstemon which was only in bloom for I don't know two weeks or something when I first got it and then it all died and I've always read that penstemon blooms all summer but I've never had that experience so it looks like these are putting some more blooms back on so that's going to be gorgeous with the the grass in front of it these should fill out you see they 
they get pretty tall. Hopefully the others will get as tall. Um, let's see, where's this coming from? Yeah, so hopefully that'll put on the same amount of height and just be gorgeous. That'll be great too, because it'll match these, this Wendy's Wish, Wendy's Wish Salvia. These um, have struggled quite a bit since transplanting them. I had them on the porch in containers, but it was way too shady there and I had to move them. So um, it wasn't initially part of the color scheme back here, but they're such a gorgeous plant and um, they're just gonna look incredible. They have really beautiful sort of dangling conical, similar to the penstemon type shape blooms of that gorgeous like bright magenta color so um, unfortunately I did catch a bunny over here doing some damage to this gorgeous new favorite aloha which is also struggling but again once we get through this next few days um, it'll be in the 90s like low 90s high 80s low 90s for the next week so hopefully that'll be a little more bearable for these new transplants the corn, oh gosh, look, even this is like drying up, I think. That's not good. Anyway, you keep keep trying here, keep going. And this is the gorgeous cut stem uh, coneflower. Is that what it's called? Cut stem coneflower? Green, green head coneflower. And the giant purple hyssop. Literally, that's what it's called, giant purple hyssop. It's such a nice combination. These are planted way closer together than I expect, expected them to be. This is my third year with this plant. When I got it initially, it was only about five feet tall, about my height, and about a quarter of the size. So you can see what three years will give you. It's quite the treat. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Moving back to the garden. So the okra has been solid, no complaints, no maintenance needed putting on okra pods like every day um each plant at least one or two which is kind of awkward because it's kind of hard to just cook one or two um but i'm gonna i've just been putting them in the fridge and waiting until there's like a, a good size batch to process i'll probably just freeze them um some late transplanted oh look at this this is so great Late transplanted squash. Can you see the yellow squash? One, two, three down there. Um, I initially had eggplant here and the bunnies got it. So squash it is. And this is the buckwheat. Still doing great. Ooh, very lightheaded. Forgive me. Here we go. <clears throat> So we have peppers and eggplant throughout here. Um, and basil, it smells so good. Lots of little peppers coming up. Peppers are doing great. The eggplant was struggling a bit. Um, finally getting some height on the tomatoes. Not a whole lot of fruit happening though. These have been, these have been here for like a week now without much change in color so that has something to do with the heat I read the other day when it gets like too hot something I don't know it's too hot for me to think but something happens and it makes it so that they don't change it, the the high 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 heat inhibits something um, and I don't know what but just gonna leave those for now okay my pride and joy over here is the corn I made so many videos about this and I don't think I shared any of them, but oh, look at my little corn. I cannot believe it. This is the best I've ever done growing corn and it looks like it's actually working this time. And there's two varieties. There's the Martian Jewel in the front. Okay, you'll have to excuse this absolutely stunning Cosmo plant here, but the Martian Jewel, let me see if I can get over here. This is a purple variety, um, well, partially purple. I believe the kernels are a white kernel and the cob itself is purple, which should make for, I don't know, really interesting visual experience. 
and this back section is a bicolor sweet corn. They say you're not supposed to combine two different varieties close to each other, um, but I did anyway. I really wanted the purple for the aesthetic and I wasn't really expecting much to happen just based on my history of trying to grow corn. But luckily, like I said, it does seem to have, seems to work at, at least to a degree at this point. Look at this nice one. Um, and it seems to have cross pollinated already. So if you can see this has a real light purple tint to it compared to this one, which is more straight, almost white. And then down here, you can see there's like some purple markings on this stalk. And here's another, look, oh, how pretty is that? There's the sun. There it is, look how pretty that is. There it is. So, there's another, like this straight purple Marsha corn. Isn't that incredible? Look at the colors on that. So I'm really quite nervous about the tomatoes just because the bamboo I used was from last year and it's all split, which is why I have, I have it doubled up. So I'm a little concerned that it won't hold, but the tunnel is getting there. Slowly but surely it is getting there. I'm doing my best, like I said, to keep everything watered. Although with tomatoes, I usually don't do a whole lot with watering. I don't worry about it. Um, there was a video I saw, Hugh Richards, the British gardener, talked about it last year, I think, where this school of thinking that if you don't water the root, the tomatoes, it forces them to spread their roots down into the ground in search of water, creating a stronger root system. I don't know if there's any truth to that or not, but that's basically been my um, system and no complaints. So up front here we have this ginormous marigold, which was not what I planted or not what I intended. I thought I'd have little marigolds and then the sunflowers, some small varieties of zinnias down here, but this marigold is just going really bonkers. So that's fine. Um, just another example of things not always turning out as you plan them. Flexibility is important when you're gardening. And the eggplants I have up here got eaten early on, but they seem to start just recently now. They seem like they might be giving like another push, trying to put some height on. So hopefully they'll be okay. I've had this pepper, these like little peppers have been on here forever and it says to let them finally, finally red. Okay. So yeah, it's Aruba, Cubanelle, crunchy green fruits turn red at maturity. So these are very, very immature um, peppers, but hopefully I would love to see this get a little more high. I don't know why these are so short. That's another thing. I'll be quite embarrassed if these peppers and eggplants don't put on some more height and here I am with these giant bamboo stakes to to brace them so anyway lots of these little peppers and I have a, this eggplant variety is doing great and from here this is little fingers eggplant I have to look into these I don't know how little they let me see here Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't say how, how large the fruit's supposed to be, so I'm going to have to check that, but um, lots of little buds on here, so that's good. Over here, we have our first, what I think will be our first zucchini loss. Um, oh no, and this might be, oh yeah. Also, this is my one of the four or five volunteer tomato plants. 
so again, volunteer tomato plants. This tomato came up by itself. Here's a second one and a third one. There's a fourth one. You can see all the buds on there. This one over there. There's not a huge difference between the ones that I had to buy from the market and the ones that came up on their own. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm not going to worry about starting tomatoes next year. I'll just direct sow them in the ground and let them come up when they're ready. Because it's just so much effort to try to keep them happy and healthy and all. If you don't have like a nice little greenhouse or growing light situation. So I'm, I'm done with that. Next, next year, direct sow. Um, anyway. There's the vertical zucchini. I tried to get um, these to keep going despite there being signs of vine borers. I sprayed with BT. They've definitely hung in there a little longer than I thought they would. Um, just yesterday I saw this one wilting, so I do think that one's a goner. Um, I've been spraying BT on all of them. These five in the this quarter here and then this one over here I was able to remove the vine borer from sprayed it down with BT and then added more topsoil so that one looks okay I thought I saved these I'm really not sure it, it might be the heat but I think it's vine borer damage so we'll see in the meantime I started I have three little guys back here that are struggling and I did put seeds in as well in the in between there so we'll see it'll be like a little race to see which one does which one can keep up more zucchini not a day goes by that we aren't getting zucchini now which is great but um what else some blue pumpkins a jaradelle i think it's called over here and over here were late arrivals started those in cells and planted them out zucchinis um squashes pumpkins not zucchinis but different gourds and pumpkins going on over here these are all volunteer on this side and then back here there's a couple um mini jack pumpkins and who it is hot sunflowers are finally putting on some height over here which is great and the cucumber this is the one that made it although it's looking a little mosaic-y down there so we'll see um anyway it's horrible out i'm literally dripping wet right now and um that's gonna be a wrap i have noticed well yesterday i got out at around like seven i think and it was much more bearable um, to be out. It was still just as hot, but you don't have the direct sun. So that, and if you haven't tried putting some peppermint on, I do a nice, like icy cold bandana, a couple of drops of peppermint on that. And it burns a little bit around my neck, but it definitely helps keep you cool, or at least helps, helps keep me keep myself cool. So. Um, look at the little babies. I don't know what that bug is, but. Alrighty. So that's it for now. It's a hot one. Um, it's still looking really beautiful though, and will only get more and more beautiful. Again, I've said it before in videos, but summer goes until September 22nd. So right now this is, what is it? July 23rd? I think so we're peak peak summer but I picked not last year but the year before um, I was picking tomatoes till October 31st so plenty warm for the zinnias and for most of these veggies and not too late to start others so yeah I put a ton of cucumber seeds in different spots and some more squash seeds here and there and zinnias and sunflowers and all kinds of stuff I'm still getting getting in here um even like I've said before even if you only have it for a few weeks or a month or two weeks or even a week just to have 
you know, a gorgeous row of zinnias that you've never seen before in a place that were, you know, they weren't, they never existed. It's such a treat and so absolutely worth it. Um, all right, I think my phone is dying. And, oh yeah, and that's the uh, buckwheat. I think I mentioned that, I can't remember. It's too hot to think straight. So thank your local farmers. We would all be dead without them, basically. I mean, in short, most of us. So yeah, let's see if we can pay them like pro athletes from now on. Wouldn't that be great? They don't get a break. So, alrighty. Happy, healthy gardening.